So recently, Warrior has been deemed as one of the worst classes in PvP, and while that may not be wrong, it certainly doesn't show that Warrior is still very comparable to other classes. I think it's still very good, and the only reason why people think it's so bad is because usually when you play Warrior, you're playing as a side noter, and right now side noters are very very punishing because you have hollows who are very busted they do tons of damage and they have tons of sustain and blinds which are really rough for warriors to deal with you have condi revenants who are just the most broken build in the game right now then you have rangers rangers are usually pretty okay for warriors to deal with but the thing is they didn't really get their cooldowns really nerfed they have like 20 second stun breaks and they have three stun breaks on their utility bar so um, yeah, it's really hard to lock down rangers, and their pets didn't really get nerfed that much, so if you look at warrior, you know, 60 second cooldown traded on shake it off, so, you know, compare that to ranger stun breaks, which are like 20 second cooldown, you know, yeah, they need to be nerfed, not warrior needs to be buffed, if you know what I mean, so I tried to think of a warrior build that doesn't go to the side node right now. I made a team fighting warrior build. So this warrior build basically goes to team fights, it heals its allies a little bit and supports them with shouts, and it helps its team to focus targets with movement inhibiting conditions and CC as well. And then it just does massive damage with for great justice, giving uh, might to itself and to its team. and than doing massive damage with the axe axe which is a pve weapon set so you know it does damage so let's go into the specifics of the build i take the berserker amulet because that gives you the most modifiers you know the most ferocity and power and then rune of strength um you get a lot of might on this build so might duration is always good and whenever you have might you gain a 5% damage modifier, which you can pretty much keep up all the time because of Courage Sigil on your axe. So that's really nice. And whenever you gain Might, right, you're going to gain healing because of Mending Might and Tactics. So it's always just nice. And then I have Sigil of Opportunity because, as you'll see later, there's a ton of Cripple in this build and Immobilize. So you can pretty much consistently get the 5% extra damage here and that's just more modifiers so when you stack a lot of modifiers you start to become pretty broken and you'll see later how much i can crit for with all this damage so next i have dagger shield so you can run greatsword but i feel that dagger shield is a little bit more survivable especially in team fights uh greatsword is more for like mobility and kind of like dueling so I choose to go for Dagger Shield instead because you have Boon Rip on the Dagger um, F1 and you have a lot of CC on the um, Dagger Shield set because Greatsword doesn't have any CC, right? So um, I take Energy Cleansing on the Dagger Shield because this is kind of like your defensive weapon set that you want to kite around with until you kind of get the opening to land your CCs for your axe combos. So yeah, just taking as much defense as possible there. Let's go over the traits. So I take Tactics, Discipline, Spellbreaker. So I know what you're thinking. How does he get massive damage without using the Strength trait line? Well, it turns out that Tactics isn't really the decision between Strengths, right? It's actually Spellbreaker. So I initially tried this build with Core Warrior with Strength, but it just turns out that doing you actually do less damage, right? Because you don't have strength. But just because you're a spellbreaker, you lock down the target much more. And it turns out that just you know being able to hit the target makes you do more damage than not being able to hit the target, right? So yeah, that's basically the main reason why you take spellbreaker is because it allows you so much more um, removal of boons, and you know you have a lot more CC because of it. So that's why um strength i feel it was kind of like too face rolly and allowed you to be counter pressured or kited too easily 
So I like this instead. And then if you went strength instead of tactics, you would just, you, you kind of wouldn't get as much CC because you don't have leg specialist and you'd actually have less sustain because you have to be kind of hitting your target to get the sustain from strength, which means when you're kiting, your sustain drops heavily. And when you're getting kited as well, um, you, you're really not hitting them as often. So tactics gives you better sustain and utility in my opinion. And there's other decisions here that I'll go over in a bit. But let's talk about the tactic straight line. So whenever you hit with a burst skill, you'll give out might to your allies and yourself. That's kind of nice because you heal yourself a little bit whenever you land a burst skill. Not too important though. Here's the big skill right here, leg specialist. Whenever you hit a target with a movement inhibiting condition, or sorry, with cripple, not with chill, but it's not like I'm giving out chill anyways. Whenever you hit them with cripple, you'll immobilize them for one second on a 12 second ICD. So you have some cripples here on your ax three. So that's a ranged cripple, which allows you to immobilize targets from afar, which is really nice for catching up to them. But also whenever the target has a movement inhibiting condition on them, you do 7% extra damage. So that's just more modifiers. And in a way, this is kind of like better than strength, you know, because if you can keep up your cripples on the target and all of your movement inhibiting conditions, that's a pretty good modifier. So yeah, then you have uh, empowered, which gives you more modifiers for every boon on me. Um, I'm not really getting that many boons from my own build. I get might and fury pretty often, and that's pretty much it. So I, I don't really get swiftness because I don't have burst mastery. So yeah, it's it's nice if you're getting supported by someone, but in general, it's just an okay trait. Next, you have Shrug It Off. In combination with Vigorous Shouts, this is kind of nice because it gives you a little bit of healing, and it's a 48 second cooldown, so it's not that long of a cooldown. And what it does is whenever you get one condition on you, it'll trigger and heal you for a little bit. And then it'll actually, it's a stun break. So it, it's actually kind of like a passive stun break. If it's, you know, the first thing that someone hits you with gives you a condition and CCs you at the same time. So it's kind of useful in some situations. But um, yeah, mainly I just like this because Warrior's Cunning doesn't really give you that much effect because it's only when they're above 90% HP. So it, your, your damage basically falls off the more damage you do. And then Empower Allies can be nice, but it's it's really only 100 power. I mean, you could take this because you're a team fighter and you want to be giving out might to your allies. But if you think about it, you compare for Great Justice. This gives you, yeah, like 400 power there from 12 might and you know 100 power is like so it's like three stacks of might so you know it's not really that good to have a permanent three stacks of might to your allies but it's okay i just like shrug it off because um it's just kind of more reliable and your sustain and then obviously whenever you apply might to an ally not just yourself you gain healing so this makes here for great justice heal you for quite a bit because 50 times 12 times however many allies this hits is quite a bit and then it also heals you and your allies because of vigorous shouts right so this reduces the recharge on all of your shout abilities which is nice because for great justice is actually a 20 second count recharge and that means it's pretty spammy which means you have a lot of burst damage that you can do because you're just going to use for great justice whenever you're doing a burst so it allows you more windows for burst and then Shake It Off has been heavily nerfed in the cooldown that it has. So having the cooldown reduction trait makes it a little bit more bearable. You know, a 60 second count recharge, it's, it's kind of bearable to use this. So that's tactics. You also gain a little bit of healing power based on your power. So, you know, you do have a lot of power with Berserk Ami. So yeah, let's go on to Discipline. So you gain five adrenaline every time you weapon swap. This is really important because my build is actually not taking a loss aversion, which is kind of what allows a lot of spellbreakers to maintain their adrenaline. So 
that's just nice you're swapping weapons every five seconds so you're gaining half of a burst skill so that's really nice warrior sprint whenever you have uh, swiftness you're going to gain damage increase but you don't really get swiftness on this build you can from your allies but mostly you want it for the movement speed increase and whenever you use a movement skill you will remove immobilize so eviscerate is a leap skill you don't really have many other uh, leaps on your axe but most of your leaps are from daggers so your two your shield four and your f1 are all leaps and then you have some Rampage skills that are leaps, but you're pretty much already immune to Immobilize anyways in Rampage. Um, but yeah. Next you have Brawler's Recovery. That's just really necessary because you're swapping weapons all the time and you're... I mean, this is a no-brainer, right? You don't, you don't take Destruction of the Empowered, right? Even though that's really tempting to take and it gives you a lot of damage, you really need that Condi Cleanse. So... Next is Versatile Power. You gain Might whenever you weapon swap. That's just nice. More sustain, more damage. And reduces the recharge on your burst skills. So that's kind of nice because full counter is an 8 second cooldown. We'll talk about that later. Lastly, we have Axe Mastery. So this gives you a lot of damage. So it gives you 120 ferocity just for slotting the, um, the trait. And then it gives you an extra 120 ferocity every axe you wield so if you look here i have 218 i have 209 without the trait 218 with it then when i swap to my axe axe i have 233 crit damage so that's pretty good and then your axe skills gain reduced recharge so that's just really good it helps you do more damage a lot of your axe skills just do damage really there's not much utility so it just basically it results in you doing more damage and then also, whenever you crit with an axe skill, you'll gain additional adrenaline, which as I said before, you're not taking loss aversion, so the increased adrenaline gain is nice to make up for that. Next, Spellbreaker. So Spellbreaker is pretty good because of full counter mostly, but we'll talk about full counter after the traits. So no escape. Whenever you daze or stun someone, you inflict immobilize. So if you combine this with leg specialist you get a lot of immobilize so whenever you daze whenever you basically cc someone you'll remove a boon you have a lot of cc on this build still because of dagger shield and the dagger f1 also removes three boons by itself so you, you know you remove a lot of boons with rampage as well so it's just kind of nice that's why spellbreaker is so good still in my opinion because boon removal is really really good and um yeah so next is slow counter slow counter gives you cripple and slow whenever you land your full counter on someone so essentially when you land your full counter what you'll do is you'll daze someone because you have to first hit, get you know retaliate on them and then it'll daze them for two seconds it'll cripple and slow and then cripple will proc leg specialist and then the days will proc no escape so they'll be dazed for two seconds from full counter and then they'll be immobilized for two seconds from these two traits or these three traits rather and so what that amounts to is so it's kind of like a stun if you think about it so when you're immobilized you can't move when you're stunned you can't move and when you're um you can't dodge either right and when you're dazed, you can't use any skills, which is also when you're stunned, you can't use any skills unless they're stun breaks or like instant casts like that. So um, essentially, whenever you land full counter, obviously leg specialist has a 12 second ICD. So it's not exactly the same cooldown as full counter. And you can also proc it and stagger the cooldown of leg specialist with a throw axe. But essentially sometimes, you can get a two second stun off of your full counter. And obviously they would have to not have stability too because then they wouldn't get dazed and then it wouldn't proc no escape. But it would still immobilize them because it would apply cripple. So yeah, your full counter can, in a way, if you think about it, like do a two second stun sometimes, which is pretty strong. So yeah, that's really good. Um, 
I think that that is the main reason why this build is so strong is because you can lock people down for your team so often and it allows you to land your damage. So um, yeah, we'll talk about the combos that you can land when they're CC'd. But anyways, Attacker's Insight is really good too. Whenever you remove a boon or disable a foe, you'll gain a stack of in Attacker's Insight. Um, Whenever you disable a foe, you also remove a boon, right? So it's kind of like you gain two stacks every CC, but you also remove boons from the dagger F1. Um, so yeah, whenever you gain a stack of attacker's insight, you gain 45 ferocity and 45 power. And that's pretty easy to stack up because you're doing constant um, you know, CCs with dagger three and shield four, and oftentimes, that's kind of how you land your uh, damage combos is you first CC and then you'll go into your damage combo. So it kind of stacks up your ferocity and power, which is just more modifiers. As we said earlier, we're trying to stack up as many as we can. So it gives you a lot of damage and the buff lasts for 15 seconds. So it's not like you have to CC them right before you do your damage combo. It lasts quite a while. You can stack that up for, you know, five stacks, uh, times 45 that you know that's that's up to like 200 or something like ferocity and power that's quite a lot of damage so um yeah that's really good and that's kind of why i think that spellbreaker is just better than the strength trait line because it has utility and damage all in one so yeah spellbreaker is just busted by the way uh lastly we have revenge counter so revenge counter is really nice most people have been taking Mage Bane Tether, but that's more 1v1 oriented. You really need Revenge Counter for team fights because the resistance, first of all, is really good for... Um, it makes up for the fact that you don't have Mending. So most people take Mending with Strength, but we're not Strength, so we don't take Mending because there's no physical trait in there. And the resistance helps make up for that. And also, in team fights, it's really important to have the resistance because... If you get blinded on your full counter, then you don't land the days, and then you don't land all the other juicy stuff that comes with your full counter. So having resistance on full counter allows you to land your full counter more reliably, which you know gives you most of your value. And you know they can still dodge it, right? But then they're using a dodge, and it also it'll copy conditions on you to foes. So you can copy up to three conditions but you're already giving out cripple and slow with your full counter and immobilize. So if it doesn't, if you copy out three conditions that aren't these three, you can give up to six conditions with your full counter. And that's pretty strong. Even if you're not a condition class, giving out that many conditions is really nice for your team because that's giving out cover condies that the allies are maybe gonna waste their condi cleanse on, or you can just have your allies putting other conditions on them that are doing damage and then you're making it harder for them to cleanse the ones they want to and just in general yeah you're just debilitating the enemy and doing massive presence in team fights so yeah revenge counter is 100% the team fighting grandmaster so that's really important to have so those are all the traits and stuff let's go over the build uh, utilities so Obviously this is a shout synergy build, so I take to the limit. You could possibly take the natural healing because that removes conditions. Like I, as I said, you don't have that much condition cleanse on this build. So natural healing could be good. It removes boons from you, but you're not really getting that many boons. And it's actually one second longer cooldown than to the limit traded. And it heals for a little bit more Actually, no, to the limit heals for more because of the um, the shout trait. So, um, yeah, natural healing is probably better for like if you want to be more selfish because it has Condi Cleanse. But to the limit is also good because it gives you adrenaline. And as I said before, adrenaline is pretty, uh, you know, it's hard to come by sometimes because you don't have loss aversion. But um, it also gives 100 endurance, which is two dodges. And that's in an AOE, so it gives it to your allies. So you're healing your allies for a hundred, you know, a thousand three hundred. You're giving them two dodges as well. That's a lot of support for your team to use in team fights. So 
as I said, this is a team fighting build, so that's what I would use.